Hey everybody, well, <clears throat> this tank looks much worse than I thought it did because the lights are not on and the, the sunlight's just on it. I raised the shades so you could see. This tank looks like complete ass. No green hair algae, but there is, well, green on the glass as you can see. The tank looks like ass. Um, reasons for this, I did have a orange shoulder tang die. I could not find him or her anywhere. That orange shoulder tang passed away. Just it was it was great, and then it just couldn't find him. So that added to the nitrate problem. Um, not many fish in here. Just a naso and a fox face spike, and uh, four clownfish. That's it. I did two 20 gallon water changes. I did one yesterday and I am now vacuuming, siphoning out the sand. I'm going all the way through into the bottom of the sand, all right? You know, I, I've seen videos where people were like, if you have a deeper sand bed, I mean, there's quite a bit of sand here. This is like four inches of sand and then there's two inches, so six inches of sand and it looked nasty. It was all like black and purple. And so people are like, if you have a deep sand bed, don't vacuum it. Well, you know what? I am now because I don't, just the thought of all that uneaten food and fish waste making its way to the bottom of the tank really bothered me. Bottom of the sand, all that nastiness. I mean, you guys should have seen the water I was pulling out of this tank when I siphoned it last night and a, and a few nights before. I mean, the five gallon jugs were dark brown very dark brown water. I don't want that in my tank. And I've seen a lot of people siphon down through the sand, the deep sand bed even, and they're totally fine. I do have plans on getting rid of uh, a couple inches of sand with the uh, water changes. So weekly now what I'm gonna do is 20% water changes. When I started this channel, I was doing 10% water changes, 10 gallons every week. And you know what? My water was awesome. No algae, nothing. And I looked back on older videos and it's like, are you kidding me? That, that's how good my tank looked. Well, you know what? I've been neglecting this tank. I've been so busy. I have not been doing weekly water changes and I stopped vacuuming into the sand bed. Well, that's gonna change. A few months later, I noticed an aptasia, then two, then three. So I'm battling aptasia. Aptasia will it's, it's an anemone, it's a form of an enemy. It's, it's a weed, they're nasty. They can sting and they can kill coral and those bastards in your aquarium are not good. Um, another thing that I, so I'm gonna be eradicating those. They're coming up an awful lot. I lost all my coral but one. There's a torch coral that's doing all right. Now you can't see it, but it's, it's right there. I had a bunch of zoanthids all, along, all on this rock. They're pretty much gone. So between that fish death and not doing water changes like a dumbass, um, and then the aptasia coming in here, it's not uh, not doing too good. But I got nothing to hide. I wanna I wanna show you guys the good and the bad. And this is embarrassing. This is bad. This tank was thriving. This tank was killer. And I had you know five or six tangs and a couple clowns. Uh, weekly water change of ten percent. And I was vacuuming the sand bed back then as well. So basically I was getting everything out of this tank. Well, you know, look, look what I've not been doing. A water change maybe once a month, um, not vacuuming the sand bed. And I had a fish death and I couldn't ever find the body. And it was a regular, you know, medium sized tang, like a coal tang, you know, maybe a little bigger. So that's my plan, but I'm gonna get this taken care of what I'm gonna do is scrape all this algae off, do another deep siphoning of the sand bed, maybe in this area, a section at a time for every water change. That's gonna be another 20 gallons tomorrow. And I'm gonna suck up all that algae with the siphon. I'm gonna blow off the rock again. And this tank is gonna be better. And I'm thinking about moving this downstairs, but I don't have a utility sink downstairs to make water, but I would love to do that because I could put my Rubbermaid container in the basement, my 20 gallon Rubbermaid container uh, on wheels. I can put this in the living room area downstairs where the basement's finished. 
I can make my water downstairs. I'll get a plumber over here to install and plumb in a sink so I can make my water downstairs instead of having everything crammed into the laundry room. And then I'll get a new stand because um, this one, I don't like it. There's too much salt creep that was splashing from when I had all the sumps down there. Um, plus this is an eight year old stand. I'd like to get rid of it. The only thing that I have a problem with is this tank is like eight years old. Comment on this, help me out with this. If I get that stand, which I think I want to, and I'm gonna move it in the basement, probably. If you empty a tank, does it affect the seals? I've heard with all that water weight and all that compression, you remove all the water and sand and everything, and then you add new sand and water, and it, you know what I'm saying? It's like the expanding, contracting. Is that gonna be a problem? Have you guys had a problem with that? Removing all the water and then replacing it all again. Because um, I don't need any tank leaks, especially 125 gallons. Anyway, thanks for listening. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. And this tank will get better. This, I wanted to film, but then when I opened the shades to outside, I'm like, mm, this looks bad. I really don't want to put this on video. This was not this bad. A week ago, it was sort of, and then it got a lot better. And now it's like this again. So I only started doing the 20 gallon water changes five days ago. So do another one tomorrow.